Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the best material model you can find for LS Dolan TPU. And um, I'm going to do this in the following steps. I'm going to start by talking about the Campus Plastics Material Database, which is an excellent resource for finding information for different types of materials. And then I'm going to talk about how you can convert the creep modulus data that's available in the Campus Database to something that's of more use in the M calibration software. And then I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the data we just extracted and calibrate a good creep material model uh, for a polyurethane material called Lastolan 1164. And I'm going to show which material model is the most accurate for this material. So if you haven't looked at the Campus Plastics database, it's been around for a long time, and it has a lot of information for certain materials for some materials, the, the information is actually really good. It has all kinds of information. For other materials, it doesn't have very much uh, of use. So it's sort of not sure before you look which one it will be for you. But I certainly recommend that you take a look at it to see if they have information about the specific materials you may be interested in. Uh, here's one table that they have for many materials, um, stress at certain strains, compression set, etc. But for some materials, you have tables and graphs like this. You can see uh, DMA data as a function of temperature, uh, etc. What I'm going to use in my example today is stress strain data at room temperature in creep modulus data, as shown at the bottom here. And uh, here's the stress strain data from the previous uh, image. And the green one here is the room temperature. If you click on that, you'll get these control points that you can just directly extract from the database. You can then put it into M calibration and add additional data points within M calibration very quickly. So here's the room temperature stress strain curve that I will use for my example. Um, the Campus Plastics database also contains creep modulus data, in this case uh, from one hour up to 11 years. It's really awesome to have that information for at least five different stress levels. And to use this, in M calibration, we need to convert it to engineering strain versus time. And that's very easy to do. We know the stress, we know the, the modulus, so we can calculate the engineering strain from that. And there's just the results that you get for these different stress levels that were available. I like to plot this not only as stress and, and strain versus time, but also on a stress strain curve. So here's a, a graph that shows you the stress strain curve in monotonic loading and these creep curves for different types of stress levels. It's really interesting. You can now see the difference between the creep curve and this as monotonic curve. The first hour we get here, after 11 years we get here. We see it's a very viscoelastic material. It changes properties significantly over time. So this is very good for us when we want to simulate this behavior. The question though to always keep in mind when you have data like this, is this enough? Is this enough data to calibrate a viscoplastic material model? Or what material model can we use for this data? So you should always think about that as you work with these data sets. So I'm going to go through this uh, in, in a slow and systematic way. I'm going to start with an ANSYS linear elastic with a strain-based creep model. Uh, a while ago, I created an article called Which ANSYS Creep Model is the Best? And that one, I recommended this strain model. So here's the equation for it creep-based model, and there's also a time-based model, and then many other models as well. So today here, I have applied this model to this data set. And we can see that when I calibrate it to it, even though it's mainly creep data and a monotonic test, it doesn't look very good. The nature of this, this predicted strain versus time, the amount of creep strain, is not matching the data that well. And the monotonic test doesn't look so good either. The average error for all of this data at once is 16.2%. I'm not super thrilled with that. Um, the other creep model that sometimes uh, people use is a time-based creep model. I don't like those so much, but if you apply it in this case, it doesn't work that well either. I haven't been able to match the data that well for the creep domain, and the stress strain data looks pretty much the same as the strain-based model. Average error is, again, 16%. Not so good. So let's try something else. So here's a model that I often try to apply. This is the Bergstrom Boys model. It was derived for, I developed it for elastomer and rubbers. And this is not a, a material like that. So it's a little more complicated material. 
And that's why it doesn't match the data so well. You see that the predicted uh, creep curves are not terrible, but they certainly don't have the right trends going up much more. So it's not a robust, good predictor. The average error is better than the linear elastic creep balls. So it's about 15%. But I don't like this anyway. Um, how about Abacus PRF model? A lot of people try to use the PRF model for thermoplastics and, and TPU type materials. And uh, it's kind of interesting that this is the best I could come up with. This is a three network PRF model, your hyperelasticity and power flow uh, behavior. And it doesn't look so good either. The creep response does not follow what we see experimentally. Average error is 11.7%. I still don't like it. It's not that great. Here's that three network model from the PolyUMAD library. ANSYS has a version of this called the three network model 2, T, TN model. And it's starting to look better now. You can see that the, the creep curves look a little bit more realistic at larger strains, lower stresses here. Um, the average error is about 9.4%. So this is something perhaps would be useful, but we can do even better. And again, as we've seen many types in the, in the past, the polyumod TNV model, which is a, a more modern version of the TNM model, can do this very well. We see that the creep predictions look really right on. I get an error that's less than 3% for the creep by itself. And then this is the to the right, I'll see the stress strain curve prediction too. So the overall error is about 5% in this case. So, so to summarize, here's the predicted error as a function of the different models we looked at. The creep model is not good. The, the Bergstrom Boyce model is not so good. I would almost say that the PRF model is not good enough here either, or even the TNM model. The TMV model is just so much more accurate, particularly for long term creep for this material. So that's the one I certainly would recommend in this case. So, what did we learn? To summarize, when you try to simulate and predict the long term creep response, uh, the creep models that come with the finite element software are not always as good as one thinks. It actually, as we can see here, often is much better to use a viscoplastic material model, particularly the TMV model in this case was very good uh, in this example. So I would keep that in mind when you work on your materials. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them below.